Up next, the NAIA Women's National Basketball Tourney returns to Siouxland after being canceled by the pandemic a year ago. How they'll protect coaches, athletes, and fans this time around. Plus, the fight against COVID continues. We'll have the latest on the mass vaccination clinics in Siouxland straight ahead. Plus, a state park near Arnold's Park, Iowa could get a needed facelift. News 4 at 6 starts now. From KTIV, Siouxland's News Channel, this is News 4 at 6. Last year was so hard to tell everybody you're going home and there's no tournament anymore. Nearly a year ago, COVID cut short the NAIA Women's National Basketball Championship Tournament right here in Sioux City. Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Breen. Stella is off tonight. The tournament kicked off March 11, 2020. In preparation for the big crowds, the NAIA laid out several safety recommendations. Everyone was encouraged to fist bump or forearm bump to replace the traditional post-game handshake. Tyson Event Center leaders even made cleaning common surfaces a priority. But just a day later, March 12th, the NAIA canceled all spring sports and brought the basketball tournament to an abrupt end. This year, players and coaches get the chance to return and redeem themselves. KTIV's Libby Randall is with Live Link 4 outside the Tyson Event Center tonight. Libby, the pandemic isn't over, so what will this year's tournament look like? Right, Matt. Well, just one week from today, the Tyson Event Center will be buzzing with the NAIA tournament taking place just inside those doors. Today, I learned about what the process is like leading up to that and what precautionary steps they're taking to ensure everyone's safety. Certainly health and safety of the student athletes is A1 on the top of the list. With any major sporting event, what is now considered the new normal wasn't considered at all one year ago. Masks and social distancing will be required. Perhaps the biggest step the NAIA organization is taking to ensure the tournament goes on safely, COVID testing. We've been doing a lot of preparations for COVID testing uh, for all the participants. Precautionary testing, mask mandates, and limited fans. NAIA basketball co-tournament director Corey Westra says these are just some of the many things the organization has considered in the time leading up to this year's tournament. We'll have a 20% capacity of the Tyson Events Center, which is still a very nice number of capacity. It's going to be, you know, 17, 1800 people. And uh, we're going to do the pod seating uh, in there, so there'll be physical distancing. While the tournament itself should take place normally, except for those added safety measures, other events leading up to and surrounding the games will not take place this year. There will not be a banquet. Um, there will not be a Champions of Character um, day, a clinic for that. Uh, just because of the safety of those participants. It, that's a large gathering. With all the changes and challenges of putting on a tournament, Westra says he's thankful to the Siouxland community for helping make it happen. The community um, has really stepped up and said, we're back in. We want to be a part of this. We've got to get this going again. And um, I've talked to many business leaders within the Siouxland community who have said, whatever it takes. The tournament starts on March 18th, but players and coaches and even fans will start rolling into town that Wednesday, the 17th. Libby, you mentioned several times there will be rapid testing for the players and coaches before the tournament. What does the NAIA plan to do if one or more people test positive? Right, Matt, the organization is prepared to isolate any individuals that might test positive. There are a handful of rooms blocked off in various hotels around Siouxland for that specific case if it were to take if it were to happen. Now, of course, everyone participating in the NAIA tournament is required to test beforehand. Libby Randall with Live Link 4 in downtown Sioux City tonight. Libby, thanks. The Tyson Events Center, of course, has been a vaccination site for Siouxland District Health over the last month or so. With the tournament coming up, KTIV's Michaela Feldman found out how Siouxland District Health will adjust to make vaccines available for those that need them. Siouxland District Health officials say the NAIA tournament next week won't have an impact on getting vaccines into arms. Officials say they're focused on the current tier, helping to vaccinate those at manufacturing plants, the homeless population, and the disabled in the county. So far, they say 10,610 first doses have been given and 4,250 people have received both at mass and smaller vaccination clinics. Later this month, they'll begin focusing on the next group of those now eligible. That includes anyone who is 16 to 64 years of age with medical conditions that put them at an increased risk 
of severe illness from COVID-19. Some conditions include cancer, pregnancy, asthma, liver disease, and hypertension. Officials say those clinics will operate in much of the same way, but each morning that they hold the clinics, 900 people who are getting their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine will be vaccinated. Then afternoons will be dedicated to those getting their second dose. Michaela, thanks. One year ago today, the very first case of COVID-19 was reported in Siouxland. KTIV's Claire Bradshaw joins us in studio to tell us the story of that very first case. Claire? Matt, that first case in Siouxland was a high school student in Knox County, Nebraska. On March 11th, the North Central District Health Department reported a presumptive positive case in a student. But it said that that person had been experiencing COVID symptoms since March 5th. According to the Facebook post, that student attended Crompton High School and may have been exposed at a sporting event. That student was transported to the University of Nebraska Medical Center's biocontainment unit. Health officials said the Knox County case was likely a result of community spread. The district made the decision to close schools for the rest of the week out of a precaution to limit exposure. Back to you, Matt. Claire, thanks so much. Since the pandemic began, by the way, a total of 845 Knox County, Nebraska residents have tested positive for COVID-19. Today, we got to enjoy some sunshine and mild conditions. The sun won't stick around for the weekend, though. Storm Team 4 Chief Meteorologist Ron DeMars joins us with first weather. Now, Ron, at 5, you said Siouxland could expect rain this weekend. What about snow? Yeah, a potential is going to exist there, especially later Sunday into Sunday night. The first thing that's going to happen is more clouds are going to move onto the scene, although we're looking fine out there tonight. This is our Norfolk cam. Tomorrow's looking very nice as well. But come the weekend, lots of rain begins to fall. It starts later Saturday, but really ramps up Saturday night and through Sunday. Some snow accumulation could be a possibility, as I mentioned, maybe into Sunday night and Sunday. Will also be very windy. We could be dealing with wind gusts up toward 40 miles per hour, it is looking like. And again, this is Saturday at noon. Notice the increase in cloud cover is going to be happening during the day. And later in the day and to Saturday night, that's when that rain begins. And boy, as I mentioned, it could just be a day of rain on Sunday. Windy conditions as well. Not real pleasant. I'll have more about that. And that's no chance that still exists out there. But who in the Midwest will see more than us? All coming up later on. All right, look forward to it. Thank you, Ron. A park in the Iowa Great Lakes region is getting some attention from the city of Arnold's Park. Steve Schwaller with our news partner KUOO Radio is here to tell us more tonight. Steve? Matt, plans by the city of Arnold's Park to clean up and restore a park are getting a financial boost. John Franken of Imagine Iowa Great Lakes told the city council last night the organization's board of directors has agreed to reimburse the city $90,000 for the project. City officials say the project, which is also being coordinated through the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, will include removal of some brush, cleaning up some trees, and improving walkways and other amenities. Work in some of the walkways has already been completed, with work on the others to begin after this coming Labor Day weekend. The other parts of the project will soon be going out for bids. Steve, for those who want to check it out for themselves, where is Pillsbury Point Park? Matt, it's actually just a short distance to the north and west of the Abbey Gardner Cabin or west of the Arnold's Park Amusement Park a little ways and follows some of the shoreline of West Lake Okoboji. The park is little known as it is somewhat surrounded by a residential area, but it's a real charm of the lakes area. Absolutely. Is. Steve Schwaller with KUOO Radio. Steve, thanks so much. You bet. Concern tonight from South Dakota's governor after a bill to delay the implementation of a medical marijuana program fails to pass the legislature. What that could mean for marijuana in the Rushmore state straight ahead. But before we go to break, check out this family of deer who visited us right here on Signal Hill. Thanks to KTIV director Trevor Huber for taking that picture. If you've got an original picture to share, just email it to us at connect at KTIV.com and we might share it on the air. We'll be right back. First weather is brought to you by Baumgars. I know no one wants to file a bankruptcy, but if you're having a lot of stress due to not having enough money to pay your bills, your living expenses, if you're getting harassing phone calls, maybe even a garnishment, it may be time to consider a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. It's really not the end of the world. It can give you a fresh start and put you on the road to financial freedom. Just give us a call. There's never any charge for information. We can really help. Right, Cody? I grew up working in my family's supper clubs. This is where it started with us as far as the fish that we serve at Culver's today. 
We source the finest cod and batter each filet by hand and always cook it to order. That beautiful golden brown color and flaky on the inside. The fish fry is a Midwest tradition. It's about families coming together. I love bringing this tradition to guests everywhere. Mom and Dad would be proud. Welcome to Delicious. Medical data indicates that one in 20 people in the United States are at risk of getting colorectal cancer. Tuesday on Health Beat 4, the importance of screening. Health Beat 4, Tuesday on News 4 at 10. Spring weather in Siouxland is always changing. Always know what's around the corner. Get a 10-day and hour-by-hour forecast with the KTIV Storm Team 4 weather app. Download now. Brought to you by Buena Vista Regional Medical Center. Live from Signal Hill, you're watching News 4 at 6 with Matt Breen, Stella Daskalakis, Chief Meteorologist Rhonda Mars, and Sports Force with Brad Pouch on KTIV Siouxland's News Channel. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem says a bill passed by the legislature which restricts girls' sports in public schools to students biologically female isn't about transgender people. The bill would require student athletes to sign a document stating their biological sex. No transgender girl currently plays in the female high school sports leagues in the state, that according to the High School Activities Association. Noem said the bill has to do with Title IX and fairness in sports. The Activities Association, which opposes the bill, evaluates applications from transgender girls on a case-by-case -case basis. Governor Noem also concerned tonight about the implementation of legalized marijuana in her state. In November, voters approved Initiated Measure 26. Noem has said her administration doesn't have enough time to organize a medical marijuana program by the time it's set to be implemented July 1st. She initially asked for that program to be delayed by a year before then asking for a six-month delay. A bill was approved in the House to delay, but was then amended by the state Senate. The bill ultimately died, meaning that measure, approved by voters in November, will go forward as initially planned starting July 1st. And it was a pleasant enough day out there. Free looking up there in Okoboji, but changes arrive for the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up. For six days only, Home Furniture has put everything on sale. And you can finance it free for six years. Six days of savings. Six years zero interest financing. The 646 sale. Only at Home Furniture. It's tournament time and anything can happen. Big wins, bigger upsets. And a can't miss offer to start it off. Bet $4 on an underdog. Win $256 if they win. It's that simple. Will one team's heartbreak be your reason to celebrate? There's only one way to find out. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Bet four to win 256 and march on. Winter is full of surprises, but you'll be ready with a Ford Escape. Because with up to 5,000 total cash, now is the perfect time to get behind the wheel. Chilly mornings, you've got remote start. Freezing temperatures, forget about them with heated seats. But hurry, your chance to save big and see for yourself how the Ford Escape is built for weather ends soon. For a limited time, get up to 5,000 total cash on an Escape. Only at your Northland Ford dealers. Home Seasonal Concepts is now open with the largest selection of outdoor furniture on sale. Plus, get a free fabric upgrade on custom or special order cushions and slings from Homecrest Outdoor Living and Tropitone. And free no-contact garage drop shipping now at Home Seasonal Concepts. KTIV is proud to salute the members of our team celebrating their employment anniversary. Cameron Kramer, one year. Angela Rogers, one year. Don Stay, four years. Marianne Farley, 26 years. Rhonda Mars, 30 years. Thanks for making KTIV Siouxland's news channel. Eddie Murphy, our unique connection. He's just a little baby. All new Drew. Tomorrow at 3 on KTIV. Get a 10-day forecast every day. Only from the weather experts of Storm Team 4. Well, I love me a pretty sunset, and that's exactly what we have going on tonight on our Okaboji cam. Clear skies up that direction. We have just a few clouds way out on the horizon from here in Sioux City. 
It's a nice view from our Blackbird Bend Casino cam. Up above, though, it's clear. 49 is our current temperature with northwesterly wind at only 6 miles per hour. Very different than those gusty winds that we were seeing yesterday. And what a change we made in just three weeks. Of course, we had those record lows of 28 degrees below zero on February 16th and the very next morning as well. 73 just a couple of days ago. That was a record high. So... That's a quick turnaround. Yesterday was kind of a volatile day where it was very cold out to the west, very mild still to the east. Now things evening out. 49 right here in town. It's a little cooler to the north, certainly with 20s up that direction and a little bit warmer down to the south. Wichita, for example, at 59 degrees. But bigger changes lie ahead yet again. No advisories here in the KTIV viewing area, but down to the south, these flood watches are for the system that moves in this weekend. You can see two to four inches of rain down that direction, and that's the reason for the possibility of flooding. And out west, it's going to be cold enough that instead of rain coming down, it is going to be heavy snow. Winter storm watches in the blue and winter storm warnings in the pink colors that you see there. In that winter storm watch in western Nebraska, there's a place like Scott's Bluff, Nebraska, for example, that could get two feet of snow out of this thing. If you like the snow, you might have to head farther off west to really get in on the big stuff because it looks like this is going to be more of a rain event for us at this point. Here's your Storm Team 4 future track showing just quiet conditions. A few clouds do move in later tonight and through the day tomorrow, but we'll call it partly cloudy and that'll cover us just fine. We'll start to see an increase in our clouds Friday night into Saturday morning. And then as we get into the noon hour on Saturday, more clouds continue to stream from south to north. By the evening hours, a little bit of rain could begin. And some of that could even be just a little farther to the north than what you're seeing right there. But it certainly becomes a little more intense during the nighttime hours Saturday night and throughout our day on Saturday. Sunday as well. On top of the rain coming down, it's going to be windy. Just kind of an unpleasant day overall with temperatures in the low to mid 40s, it's looking like. Then getting into Sunday night, it starts to get colder, so some snow may start to mix in. We'll have to see the exact track of this and what the temperatures are going to be like to see if we can get some of this to accumulate in the region. The most likely areas would be the northern and western parts of the region that have the best chances of some accumulation. And then this could linger into Monday morning, still a light rain-snow mix as the system starts to pull out of here. But I'm talking some hefty rainfall amounts that are going to potentially be out there. Some of us could see a good 1 to 3 inches. The more likely scenario would be for the southern portions of Siouxland to see the heavier amounts. The lighter amounts would be a little bit farther to the north. So, now well, we'll keep an eye on the weekend and we'll certainly let you know if any of those changes begin to occur. That can happen with these systems, so we'll keep a very, very close eye on it, obviously. 45 in Spencer and Storm Lake right now. Wayne, you're at 48 degrees. That northwesterly wind, nothing like what we were seeing yesterday when it was gusting over 50 miles per hour for some locations. And highs today were a little bit above average. Upper 40s to lower 50s pretty much covered us in northwest Iowa. And the same kind of story across Nebraska and South Dakota as well. Right here in Sioux City, another above average day for us as we hit 53. Our low this morning was 32 degrees. And tonight we stay above average yet again. Lows in the upper 20s and tomorrow partly cloudy skies lead to highs quite a bit like what we saw today. A lot of us in the low to mid 50s. Then we'll keep in the 30s tomorrow night with the increase in the cloud cover and then a chance of some later day rain showers on Saturday as we turn our clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed Saturday night. You probably wake up to rainy, windy conditions on Sunday. Some snow could try to mix in Sunday night into early Monday. Monday's high temperature around 40 degrees. We'll then stick in the 40s for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with maybe some warmer conditions as we approach next weekend. Certainly a wet go of it this weekend, Ron. It looks like it. All day Sunday, maybe. All right, thank you. A cafe in Russia has combined a cat shelter with a working cafe. The idea came about after local shelters ran out of space. The cafe also functions as an alternative workspace for people wanting to get out of the office. For $7 an hour, a visitor gets a place to work, Wi-Fi, a choice of tea or coffee, plus unlimited access to all of the cats. Since the cafe's opening March 1st, several cats have already found new homes. And just ahead in sports, Sarchima Fluton looks their 12th win in a row. A spot in Class 3A championship game. Those highlights are just ahead. And Boyd Hall and Western Christian try to get into the 2A title game. Sports Force is next.
Wake up with Al, Michaela, and Jerry on News 4 Today starting at 5 a.m. Baumgars Feeds Chick Starter Grower with 18% protein is a complete feed designed for layer and broiler type chicks from start to finish. Get 40 pounds for $9.99. And right now, when you purchase Hill Science Diet Dog Foods 21 pound and larger and Cat Foods 13 pound and larger, you'll get $4 off regular price. What you need when you At Boystown National Research Hospital, you'll find the region's leading pediatric specialists in epilepsy, hearing loss, cleft lip and palate, thyroid, and digestive disorders. Find life-changing care for your child at boystownhospital.org. Want a brain better? Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nareva has clinically proven ingredients that fuel five indicators of brain performance. Memory, focus, accuracy, learning, and concentration. Try our new gummies for 30 days and see the difference. Who really has the best beef? Meet the facts. Fact. High V standards are so high, their cattle have to be hand selected. And only six out of 100 cattle are even good enough to be called High V Choice Reserve. Only six out of 100. Makes you wonder who's buying the other 94 and selling that beef to their customers. Get the facts at meetthefacts.hyvee.com. Hey, did you hear? Short Staffed is giving away free TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Short Staffed is getting people paid and giving away TV. Work 30 days without missing a day and get a free TV. Don't miss this amazing offer. Apply today. Are you and Stabler good partners? We've worked together a long time. I can anticipate what he's thinking, what he's going to do. Yeah, we have a great rapport. Elliot put his papers in. There was nothing I could do. Live! SVU Organized Crime Crossover Event, April 1st on NBC. Next ET. This is like the best thing I've ever gotten to do. Get ready to ask Drew Barrymore anything in our new segment, Dear Drew. Women love to be courted. Yes! Plus, a Grey's Anatomy return bigger than McDreamy. Yeah, I'd say so. Then... Hey, everyone, it's Soleil Moonfry, and I have the honor of interviewing my dear friends, Brian Austin Green and Balthazar Getty. Only on ET. E Tonight at 6.30 on KTIV. Get a 10-day forecast every day, only from the weather experts of Storm Team 4. Welcome back. With 10 straight wins, Sergeant Buff Luton is the hottest team in the Class 3A state tournament. The Warriors scored 38 points in Round 1, but it was enough to beat Western Dubuque in overtime. SBL playing second-seeded Pella in the 3A semifinals. A win moved, moved the Warriors into the title game for the second straight season. Warriors strike first Nick Muller with a quick release from the corner. And that one is nothing but net. Later in the quarter, SBL gets it inside to Majok Majuk. Gets the contested shot to drop, but the Warriors were down 10-5 after a quarter. SBL trying to get their offense going. Jacob Immig banks in two of his seven points. No SBL player was in double figures, though. Shot starting to fall for the Warriors. Jake Lehman will sink the long three-pointer. Devi was down by seven at the half. And Pella just kept sinking shots. Grant Nelson was in double figures. He had 13 points. And Pella sidelines SBL 46-32. Super proud of the group. I mean, if we think about our path, I don't think anybody um, had to win more tough games to get here than we did. And uh, certainly no shame in finishing in the final four of the state tournament. So we are super proud of the group. I really enjoyed playing with all these guys. And growing up around them and stuff it's been really special but obviously it's really tough for it to come to an end and the spl finishes their great season at 17 and 8. boyden hall and western christian have both been to the class 2a's top 10 teams and most of the season they were in the top 10. they're each playing in separate semifinals, trying to get to the title game ktv's devin reiners has that story Brad Boyden Hall is just two wins away from successfully defending their title. The top seeded comments are taking on Applington Parkersburg in the semifinals. The other semifinal features Western Christian, 
and Des Moines Christian. We start with unbeaten Boyden Hall against Applington Parkersburg, who is 22 and 3. Marcus Kelderman gets the Comets started the senior with an acrobatic finish inside. He had 22 points, but Boyden Hall trails by five after a quarter. The Comets get rolling in the second quarter. Tanner Tislas sinks the turnaround jumper. Two of his game high 24. Boyden Hall leads by two at the break. Boyden Hall erupts for 55 second half points. Cody Noble kisses it off glass for two. It's a seven point lead for the Comets. That lead would increase to double digits in the fourth. Brian Zylstra swishes the corner three. He tallied 15 off the bench and Boyden Hall wins 77-66 to advance to the state title game for the third year in a row. It's not the first time we've been behind in the, you know, in the first quarter and the kids just to have that presence and just have that confidence that we'll be all right, you know, and, and we adjusted a few things at halftime and, and came back and I think we played a tremendous second half. Next up, it's the number two seed Western Christian taking on Des Moines Christian. The Wolfpack out and running early. Ashton Van Hall banks in the tough layup, two of his six points. Later, it's Van Hall grabbing a rebound and finding Wyatt Galker who buries the three pointer. Western Christian leads 10-9 after a quarter. It was a balanced attack for the Wolfpack in this one. Braden Van Meter and powers his way in for the bucket, two of his 11 points. Closing seconds of the first half, Tyson Bohr fires from deep. His triple is good just before the buzzer, and the Wolfpack are moving on to the championship game with a 56-47 win. I'm just proud of the guys. There's just a lot of pride at Western, and... You know, you don't want to let down the tradition, so you just work and work and work and you learn. Western Christian and Boyden Hall will meet in the Class 2A championship game Friday at 2.30. In Des Moines, Devin Reiners, KTV Sports Force. And in the Nebraska semifinals, top seeded O'Neill St. Mary's falls to Parkview Christian 62-53. The Cardinals move into the consolation game at 23-3. Two games are tonight in Class C2. Cedar Catholic is playing top seeded Grand Island Central Catholic. The game just started. And the late game is C2 has six seeded BRLD playing second seed in UTAN coming up at 8 30. In a game in the fourth quarter, second seed winner leads Dakota Valley in the girls' Class A state tournament 48-36. BD started the day at 16 and 5. This is DB's second trip to the girls' state tournament. Uh, those highlights coming up tonight at 10. And that'll do it for sports. We'll be uh, we're right here. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Brad. Before we go, Ron, one final check of that forecast, and it could include a pretty wet weekend. That's right. I am right here, and we are talking about a very nice Friday, actually. Then the clouds move in, a chance of a few showers late Saturday. But then rain really takes over Saturday night and through the day on Sunday as well. So some big changes as we head into the weekend. Something we'll have to pay attention to in the next day or two. Ron, thanks so much. And thank you for joining us tonight for News 4 at 6. ET's up next. We'll see you back here again tonight for News 4 at 10.